Hey guys, it's Bella and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another episode of Mystery Mondays and as always, if you guys like this series, please give it a thumbs up so I know that you love it and want to see more and also comment down below what cases you think I should do next. Also, I would love to hear what you guys think about this case once I've like told you everything about it. I would love for you guys to comment down below, let me know what you think of the case, what your theory is. So. Today's case is really interesting. Actually, a lot of people think that this was an accidental death and that it, like, wasn't murder. But then a lot of other people, me included, think that this was actually a homicide. So today's video is about Kendrick Johnson. He was a 17-year-old boy and he died the 10th of January in 2013. So, January the 11th in 2013, Kendrick Johnson was found in a rolled up gym mat in Lowndes High School in Valdosa, Georgia. He was found in an inverted position, so the mat was like vertical and he was found in an inverted position with his hands behind him like face down. So, the Lowndes High School that Kendrick attended, they had an old gym and a new gym. And in the old gym, they had a whole bunch of these like gym mats, they're like six feet tall three feet wide they're really huge and the center like the hole of the center of one of these mats is 14.5 inches for reference Kendrick's shoulders are 19 inches wide and they had a whole bunch of them in the back corner of the old gym a whole bunch of kids at that school used to use them to store their stuff so they didn't have to pay for lockers and Kendrick was included him and his friend both had this pair of shoes that they shared and they would just leave them in one of these mats um, and just get them when they needed them. So on January the 10th at around 1 p.m. surveillance cameras that they had at the school saw Kendrick walking into the gym, the old gym, and no one followed him into the gym for another three minutes. It's also important to mention that the two surveillance cameras that were in the gym also seem like they might have been tampered with and they were also missing a lot of footage so in the surveillance footage of Kendrick going in it shows him like going in and there's like this other kid in the frame and then as he like runs away all of a sudden there's just like new people in the gym just randomly out of nowhere they just like appear they don't walk into the frame they're just like there and one of the cameras was missing was missing an hour and five minutes of footage and the other camera was missing two hours and ten minutes of footage so after this footage at 1 p.m. of Kendrick entering the old gym he was marked absent from his next class and he didn't come home that night so at around 10 p.m. when Kendrick didn't come home his mother Jackie decided to go and patrol the school because he was meant to be coming home straight after watching uh, a I don't remember if it was like football or soccer but he was watching some kind of sporting game after school and then he was meant to come straight home after that so at 10 p.m. his mum started getting really worried and she went and drove like around the school kind of patrolled for him and she didn't find him obviously and then at the at midnight that same night she called the police um, and reported him missing and the police kind of dismissed it they were like oh he's probably just out with a girl but his mum did not believe that so the next morning she went into the school and talked to the receptionist they started printing out colored flyers to put up to see if anyone had seen Kendrick because his mum thought that he was missing and that's when she found out that Kendrick's body had actually been found in the old gym in one of the mats so at 10 30 that morning there was a group of students in the old gym and they were sitting around the mats when they realized they could see a sock sticking up at the top of one of the mats they went over they thought it was a joke and they looked in and that's when they realized that there was somebody in there so with the help of a gym teacher they started pushing the mat over to its side and they saw him in there and started like pulling him out from the top part of his body they started pulling his body out and that's when they realized they smelt all of this decomposition like decomposing body they saw blood and they saw vomit and that's when they realized that this guy Kendrick was dead they, a whole bunch of them called 911 and the gym teacher moved all of the students into the new gym so they didn't have to see it. After this, the school went on lockdown. They informed Kendrick's mother that they found his body in an inverted position and it had been there for about 21 hours. So the Lowndes County started an investigation as soon as they heard of this dead body. They interviewed everyone that was in the gym and all of their stories lined up. Around Kendrick's body, they also found some schoolwork 
work like his physical science book they also found some blood but that turns out it wasn't his there was also found tissues with blood on them in one of the bathrooms in the in the trash cans but they also declared that this was not his DNA showed that it was another girl who got into an accident that day with one of her flagpoles so the blood was from her none of the blood on the scene was Kendrick's except for the blood that was inside the mat. There was also two pairs of shoes that were found in the mat. So one of them was actually like next to his legs and the other pair, there was like one pair of shoes one shoe from a pair that was kept next to the mat and then the other one was inside the mat which was under his head which had blood on it as well. So something really weird was that six hours after the first officers arrived they then called a coroner and officially declared Kendrick dead which I just think is a little weird that they waited till six hours after when it was pretty clear that he was deceased and then later that night the sheriff's department declared stated that Kendrick's death was an accident and that there was no foul play involved the sheriff believes that Kendrick reached in to get his shoe and he fell in through the opening. He got stuck and then he died from asphyxiation by suffocating to death. He says his body was stuck vertically which caused all of the blood to rush to his head and he was also like the position that he was in was really tight so it kind of acted like a cocoon around him and suffocated him. The Johnson family did not believe that the sheriff's theory at all. They thought that their son was murdered. There's enough evidence to show that Kendrick was murdered. They know something happened in that gym and they don't want it to come out. And so the next day they hired their own private investigator. His name was Floyd Rose and they hired him to do his own separate investigation into Kendrick's death. The parents say that it's it was basically the sheriff's theory was impossible for him to just fall in the opening because the opening was only 4.5 inches wide and Kendrick's shoulders were 19 inches so how do you just like fall in a gap that is smaller than you? He was also they also think that his feet were tall enough that his feet should have been sticking out which is how they found him because they saw his socks sticking out and they also think that if he was strangling or he got stuck in an uncomfortable position that he would have been screaming for help so somebody surely would have heard him especially considering kids came in three minutes after Kendrick entered there would have been other kids in the gym and somebody would have heard him struggle or scream or something along those lines and they also found found it odd that nobody called the coroner for six hours after the first officers arrived. They thought that that was really shady. Another strange thing to note is that Kendrick's grandfather, Eddie Tooley, asked to see the body because Kendrick's father was in Pennsylvania at the time of the death. So his grandfather asked to see the body and the sheriff's department didn't let him see it. And this is despite Georgia law, which states that a body must be released within 24 hours if requested, if there's no official foul play involved. And then when Kenneth Johnson arrived back in Georgia, which was his father, they also denied him of seeing the body. Kenneth then called for a press conference saying that they weren't allowing him to see the body. And he also told the reporters about his wishes to see his son's body before it was moved to Macon, I believe it's pronounced, for his autopsy. So he wanted to see his son before his autopsy, before everything was like cut up. Eventually he was allowed to see his son's body in the Valdosa Lounge Regional Crime Lab. Kenneth describes his son's body as having blackened skin, he had swollen lips, bruises all over his body, he had short fingernails which he thought was weird considering Kendrick always keeps his fingernails long. He had scratches on his hands, he had discoloration on his face and just a whole lot of injuries all over his body. The autopsy that was then performed supported the sheriff's theory. They said that he died from asphyxiation and then Ken Kendrick's body was then moved back to Valdosa. The man who transported the corpses signed off on saying that all of Kendrick's clothes were with him. He said that there were three t-shirts, a black pair of shorts, a pair of pants, boxes as well as a pair of socks and he said all of this was with the body when he was transporting the body from Macon 
to Valdosa. So Georgia law states that all of the items that were found with the body must be returned back to the family. So all of these items should have been returned back to the family, but all they received was a pair of broken earphones. Basically, the family didn't think much of it. They thought that it might have contained some evidence that indicated there was foul play involved, so that the police must have just kept the clothes for the, that reason. They thought that it had some sort of DNA evidence or had some evidence that there was a form of resistance which supported the family's theory so they just didn't really think much of it they just thought that there was a reason the police were keeping the clothes so in june 2014 the johnson family asked dr william anderson to exhume the body and have a second autopsy have a second look at the body because they did not believe the first one that basically said that asphyxiation was the cause of death. When the body was exhumed, they found out that the body had been stuffed with newspaper and normally when a body is stuffed, they stuff it with cotton or sawdust. The family was not happy about this to say the least um, and the sheriff's department said while it's not really the best practice that they, the funeral home really didn't do anything wrong or illegal. So the funeral home also stated that they weren't given any organs by the police and the police said that the organs were destroyed by a natural process and then discarded. And it was also later revealed that the clothes that he died in were missing. So anyway, the second autopsy that took place by Dr. William Anderson disputed the first autopsy which was made by the sheriff's department and he said that Kendrick actually died from blunt trauma blunt force trauma to his neck where there were bruises. There were also said to be injuries close to Kendrick's brainstem where if there was physical trauma it could easily incapacitate a person and kill them. The family then submitted this autopsy, the autopsy findings to the United States Justice Department as well as the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation said that they were happy with their findings from the first autopsy and the United States Department of Investigation said that they were still looking into the case. Since this, the Johnson family has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the Board of, Edu Board of Education of Lowndes County as well as against the principal and the superintendent. The letter spoke about these two students, Brian and Brandon Bell. It said that they had continuously bullied their son or like said rude things to their son even in front of teachers and that nothing was done about it. After this, Brian and Brandon became suspects for the murder. So Brandon is the older brother and Brian is the younger brother. Apparently Kendrick had a relationship, like a sexual relationship with Brandon's girlfriend. Their father was an FBI agent named Rick Bell and immediately he got them lawyers and told them not to speak to anyone about the case, not to speak to the police. And they were the two boys who refused to have interviews with the police when everyone in, else in the school or in the gym was like, agreeing to have interviews with them and then the police took Brandon's, Brian's, Rick's, their mother's and Brandon's girlfriend's phones. They seized them all and their computers so that they could kind of look through them for any evidence and allegedly two years before Kendrick's death Brian and Kendrick had gotten into a physical fight. Although both of the boys had an alibi, Brandon was seen on surveillance footage in on the other side of the school in a class and Brandon was apparently in another city with his wrestling team. The weird thing was it said that his bus didn't leave, his bus didn't leave until 4 p.m. but his coach's phone says that they were in the other city at 1.53 p.m. and they also said that the bus left around 1 p.m. even though it didn't clock to leave until 4 p.m. So there was no real proof when the bus left to go in the other to go to the other city, but considering the coach's phone said 1.53 p.m., they by the time Kendrick was dead, the bus must have already been on the way to the wrestling tournament. So these brothers were cleared of all charges and there's really no other suspects in the case of Kendrick's death. So that's everything. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Let me know what you think happened, if you think that he was murdered, if you think that it was an accident and it actually was asphyxiation. He died from asphyxiation. I personally think there's too many things that show that he was murdered. Like for instance, somebody would have seen him fall in. Somebody would have noticed that he didn't come out. I'm sure he would have screamed if he did fall in and somebody would have 
heard that. I just think it's weird that nobody found him until 21 hours after he fell in. And also the fact that, I don't think I mentioned this before, but when they found him, his hands, oh yes I did mention this, but his hands weren't outstretched. Like if he was reaching in to grab a shoe, wouldn't his hand kind of be out like that? and not by his side like it doesn't make sense that he would kind of go in like that to get his shoe it makes sense that he would reach in to grab it and another weird thing is when he was going in like on the surveillance footage you can see him wearing this other pair of shoes and the shoes were found next to his legs on top of him so I don't know how they would have fell in unless like someone threw them in it just doesn't make sense that they were like all of a sudden on top of him so I don't know I feel like so many things like show that there was foul play but there's just no evidence of anyone doing it the surveillance cameras don't show that part of the gym where all the mats were so you can't really see what happened I just feel like there's so many weird things about it that don't kind of make sense that he died of asphyxiation especially I'm not going to show the body in this but I will link a clip down below where you can see a footage the crime scene which also shows his body I'll also link a photo down below which they are very graphic so do not click on them if you don't want to see graphic things I don't want to put it in this video just because it is quite graphic but in those photos and in that video you can see that he does have like so much swelling to his face and s like bruises everywhere and so many injuries and scratches on the back of his hand like so many things that don't add up with just dying from asphyxiation I don't know I have no theories on who did it because as I said there's no other suspects in the case I definitely think that there was flower play involved so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below what your theories on this case are and as always I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully I will see you guys in my next one bye